Speaker. The business for the week commencing the 7th of November will include Monday, the 7th of November, second reading of the Social Housing Regulation Bill Lords, Tuesday, the 8th of November, Opposition Day debate, seventh allotted day, debate on a motion in the name of the official opposition subject to be announced, Wednesday, the 9th of November, debate on a motion on the UK's response to the human rights and economic situation in Sri Lanka, followed by general debate on levelling up rural Britain. These subjects uh, were determined by the Backbench Business Committee. The House will then rise for the November recess at close of business on Wednesday, the 9th of November, and return on Monday, the 14th of November. The business for that week will include Monday, the 14th of November, a general debate on the Australia and New Zealand trade deals, followed by a general debate on Ukraine. Tuesday, the 15th of November, Opposition Day debate, eighth allotted day, debating the motion of the, uh, in the name of the official opposition, subject to be announced. Wednesday, the 16th of November, remaining stages of the National Security Bill. Thursday, the 17th of November, my right honourable friend the Chancellor will make his autumn awesome statement, followed by business to be determined by the Backbench Business Committee. Friday, the 18th of November, private members' bills and the provisional business for the week commencing the 21st of November includes, on that Monday, second reading of the Seafarers' Wages Bill, Lords. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Leader of the House for the forthcoming business. My hon. Friend for Newport East, the Shadow Deputy Leader, who is on Bill Committee, has reminded me that it is the 183rd anniversary of the Chartist uprising in her city of Newport. Working people marching against an ineffective government, high prices, low wages and demanding more frequent elections. Does that sound familiar? The Chartists knew just how precious democracy was. And sadly, we haven't had an election yet this year, but we have had three Prime Ministers, and I wonder what the Chartists would have made of that. Now, I am glad to see the Leader in her place and not joining the former Health Secretary down under for any Bush Tucker trials. We know she enjoys a business question far too much for that, but we also know she's a bit partial to reality TV, so perhaps I can suggest something a little closer to home. I hear Channel 4 might commission another season of Make Me Prime Minister. Um, perhaps the Right Honourable Member for Uxbridge and South Ryslip fancies his chances on a place in the sun. Uh, the whole government really ought to get themselves onto something they're actually good at, and I understand that applications for Pointless have now opened. <laughs> Mr Speaker, last week I asked the Leader of the House to wake the Environment Secretary up and warn her that she had just three days left to set the targets on air quality, water, biodiversity, resource efficiency. Unfortunately, when the Leader didn't manage to wake the Environment Secretary up and she just hit the snooze button, she missed the deadline. So is it too much to ask that Cabinet Ministers actually do the job they're paid to do? Could I ask the Leader when she can get the Secretary of State to meet these legally required required targets. Mr Speaker, the measures in the Energy Bill are essential to reaching net zero, and I understand much of that bill has been consulted and agreed on already, so why more delay? Last week, the COP26 President lost his place at the Cabinet table. The Prime Minister finally gave in on hokey cokey COP27 saga and is grudgingly popping over briefly. Labour is serious about green economic growth, energy security, bringing down people's bills, winning the race to net zero, and we have a plan for all that, which the Tories clearly don't. Could the leader tell us if they're planning to drop the energy bill, yes or no? Mr Speaker, I have raised concerns about the Right Honourable Member for Uxbridge and South Ryslip ripping off the taxpayers by making them pick up the bill for his legal advice in relation to the Parliamentary Committee's investigation into him. Cabinet Office said it's OK because he was acting as Prime Minister. No, Mr Speaker, he's being investigated as an ordinary Member of Parliament by a Parliamentary Committee for possibly misleading Parliament. So does the leader think the former Prime Minister should pay back the £129,700 of taxpayers' money? 
Mr Speaker, I was surprised to see the SNP claiming yesterday's 38 to nil vote on their motion gave them a mandate for a referendum on independence. Even the Prime Minister got more votes than that. The recent, just, the recent instalment of the Scottish Government independence papers has been slammed by the Institute for Fiscal Studies, I understand, as even worse than the Tories' mini-budget. Perhaps the SNP ought to focus on sorting out their spiralling A&E waiting times and their struggling to function transport network instead of their obsession with a referendum. The word didn't even appear in the motion. Mr Speaker, this morning we expect the biggest interest rate rise in decades. Under the Tories, rising mortgages, rising rents, supermarket prices up by 17 per cent, the price of a basic bowl of pasta up by a fifth, yet government still refuses to bring in Labour's windfall tax on oil and gas giants, despite energy profits doubling. No one voted for this Prime Minister. He has no mandate. Tories are on the side of the richest 1 per cent. Labour's on the side of working people, pensioners and communities. So it's not just the former Health Secretary who ought to be screaming, I'm a Tory, get me out of here. It's time the public had the chance to vote the rest of them out. So when will the government give the country the choice between their failing trickle-down economics of the past and a fresh start and bright future with a Labour government? Thank you, Mr Speaker. Leader of the House. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, well, the, the Charters were right. Democracy is uh, very important, which is why this government is going to implement the manifesto that it stood on in uh, 2019 and received an overwhelming mandate uh, from the, the British people. Can I also just start by sending um, my good wishes, and I hope the wishes of all in this House, to our sportsmen and women for their up-and-coming matches, particularly the men's cricket team and the rugby league uh, team, as I know you'll be interested in, Mr Speaker, um, but especially the England's women's rugby rugby team for their uh, semi-final uh, match uh, coming up shortly. Um, the uh, Honourable uh, Lady Opposite uh, mentions the latest adventures of the Right Honourable Member for West Suffolk. When I heard that a colleague was volunteering to be squeezed into small spaces with slippery creatures, was going to have to swallow unpalatable things to achieve their goals, and that their credibility and dignity was placed in jeopardy, I was assuming you're talking about a member of the opposition front bench, uh, not the member for uh, West Suffolk. But she kindly reminisces about my time uh, on Splash. Um, Honourable members will. Uh, find it hard to believe, given my uh, performance uh, at the time, as compared to having the elegance of a paving slab being pushed off a scaffold. Um, but I did actually have training. But no, none of my time was spent away from this house. I have helped uh, save the Hilsey Lido, which is currently now being restored to its 1930s glory with a help from the Leveling Up Fund. Um, the Honourable Lady refers to uh, policies and delay. I think this is high praise indeed for an opposition which has no plan and no clue on any topic you care to make. This is controversial stuff, Mr Speaker. Secretaries of State are going to be allowed to express their views on their departmental policy area. I know it is radical stuff. Major investment decisions will be reflected on and discussed across Whitehall, and in these volatile economic times, people will be thinking how they can get the most for taxpayers uh, for their money. But we are conscious that decisions on investment need to be made, and decisions are need needed to reassure people on fixed incomes uh, in particular. Those decisions need to be the right ones. That is grown up joined up, stepped up government. And I would just remind uh, the opposition that it took a mere two years for the uh, leader of the opposition to ditch all of his pledges, not so much a bonfire of the policies, more a puff of, of smoke. Um, the Honourable Lady mentions COP, and I thank her for that, because it affords um, me and I hope all members of this House to pay tribute to my right honourable friend, the member for Reading, Reading West. Um, he has done a tremendous job. and. Uh, uh, the UK, we should be proud of our record in this area. We're the first major economy to commit to the legally binding target of achieving net zero by, by 2030. Um, on the matter of legal advice, this is a standard, uh, standard practice uh, that uh, ministers would have legal advice under those circumstances. But I do agree with what she says with regard to uh, our friends, the uh, Scottish National Party. One of the great joys of this job, uh, and uh, the, the opposition uh, leader 
uh, of the House, um, is explaining outside of the, to, to people outside of this place our procedures and practices. The SNP chose to use their opposition day debate not to talk about health or education or care or opportunity or social mobility or business or farming or anything uh, else related to the Scottish people. There were no surprises in the topic that they chose and how they used the precious time they had on the floor of this House and squandered that. Their motion is not a mandate. It wasn't even a binding motion. And uh, what, was, what was surprising is that not all of the SNP voted for it. Um, uh, but there we go. I'm sorry that the Honourable Lady uh, didn't mention the, uh, the cost of uh, uh, living issues and what we have to celebrate this week, which is the welcome of the £150 core council tax rebate and the second instalment of the £400 energy bill support scheme, and of course that the energy price guarantee is being launched uh, in Northern Ireland this week. Nor, I'm afraid, Mr Speaker, any word of sympathy for the travelling public who will face further uh, strike action uh, on the railways. Uh, we will always speak up for working people and the travelling public. I still live in hope the opposition might support our uh, legislation uh, and, usual, and further business will be announced in the usual way.